Hi everyone, my name is John. Today I have an interesting video that I want to share with you. And it's all about apiculture. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is apiculture? Apiculture is a type of farming that is least practiced. And yet, it has some of the highest returns to the farmer. So today, we are going to interact with an apiculture farmer so that I can teach us more about apiculture and what we need to know about it. Come along with me as we learn about apiculture. My name is uh, Jeremiah Luvembe, a, a bee farmer. Uh, bee farming is a, is a, is a, is a good venture uh, that um, is coming up. And um, being a, an agri agriculturalist, I find it very interesting because um, one, the bees, you don't need to, to, to buy them. They are easily available. Once you provide the beehive, the home for them, uh, they, they are attracted in. Um, there are very many, uh, very many importance of, uh, of beekeeping. One, uh, honey has an, an importance when it comes to health. Um, health purposes, it's used for medication, it heals wounds which is like coughing, it is used as a medicine. Apart from honey, as, a, as one of the products, we also have the, the bee wax. Also, bees are used as pollinators. When you go to, um, to farms that are growing uh, flowers, they are used as pollinators. Therefore, bees have a lot of importance to our economy. Um, just to say, there are two types of bees. Number one, we have the African uh, bee, then we have the, the, the European bee. Bees normally live in a colony. And a, and a bee colon consists of three types of bees. Number one, we have um, uh, the work bee, we have the queen, then we have the drone. The worker bee normally is the female bee. And it's, uh, most of its function is to ensure that it's collecting nectar and also it makes sure that it collects water, it uh, makes the combs in the, in the beehive. It also ensures that the, 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 the bee is cool. It, it, it makes the, bee, the, 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 the beehive to be cool. Therefore, um, the most of the work in a beehive is done by, by the work bee. Then number two, the drone is the male bee. Um, normally the work bees, maybe just to say, the work bees are around 60,000 in a colon. And then the drone, they can be around uh, 15 or 20. Then we have the queen, which is the mother of the colon. Therefore, uh, bees normally live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a well-organized community that every bee has its activity uh, to be done. Drones are used to fertilize the queen. When, when it, uh, maybe just to mention something um, on the on the queen, when the queen is ready to be fertilized, the, the, the drones that are the male bees in a colon, they normally, the, the, the queen normally is, is taken for a, or for a flight, it's to, it normally is referred to as a neptunal flight. So fertilization of the queen takes place in the environment, in the atmosphere. So it's normally it flies up, then the drones will be following it. The strongest drone normally fertilizes, the queen can be fertilized by around three to five drones. And once they do their fertilization, they fall down and die. So um, normally it's um, encouraged as uh, bee farmers, we put up an apiary where the bees are kept, where the, the, the beehives are kept. Um, uh, so it's very important that we, we ensure that we have sited our apiary in a very good place. There are three factors that should be considered when we are citing an apiary. Number one, we must cite an apiary uh, uh, basing on the nearness of, of a source of water. And it is recommended that um, the source of water should not be more than three kilometers. And number two, we are supposed to consider um, availability of flowers um, uh, in that particular area. So therefore, again, we are supposed to site our apiary close 
uh, 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 near in a place where there are flowers so that bees can be able to get um, uh, 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 nectar for the purposes of production of honey. Something else also we need to consider when we are citing an apiary is security. As much as bees are uh, 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 um, normally, uh, they, they, are, they, 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 have, they can provide security for their own, but it's also important that we need to put up uh, the air. As a, as a beekeeper, there are accessories that you are supposed to, to have when you want to approach uh, a bee hive for harvesting. One of the accessories you are supposed to have is the bee suit. Here we have the bee suit that we normally use when we want to harvest honey. This is called a bee suit. You normally put it on, it has a veil. This is the veil that normally covers the, the head so that it cannot, uh, the, the bees cannot get in. Um, something else we need to have when we are harvesting honey, we have the smoker. This is the smoker. We normally put in the sawdust, you can have sawdust or you can have dry cow dung. You put it inside. Once you put it inside, then you put in some flames of fire. So when you, you press at, at this part here, smoke, uh, smoke will begin to come out. Then once it has gotten, uh, the, the fire is ready, you close the, the top properly. Make sure it's intact, uh, properly closed. Then when you press it, smoke will come from this opening here. So you go to, so the smoke is just to make the bees to become less active by making them by, by arousing the attention of danger then they begin uh, eating the honey their bellies when they are full they become less active so therefore it's easier for you to to handle them and then we have um, um, a knife knife tool but for my case i use a panga we improvise a panga we have a knife tool we also need to have uh, what you call a um, uh, bee brush bee brush is there so that when you have uh, picked the comb from the beehive, then now you can use it for the purposes of uh, uh, brushing off the bees to now uh, cut the clean container, a, a, a container for purposes of putting in the honeycombs when you are collecting them. We also need to have a gumboots. They are the gumboots. Put them properly so that uh, um, you cover them on top with a um, with bee suit so that the bees cannot easily get inside. So uh, those are the accessories you are supposed to have when we are harvesting honey. Uh, maybe for now we can share that. I want us to go to the apiary where, where we have the beehives, where we have put the bee beehives, so that now we can be able to talk more. I'm fully prepared, properly put on my bee suit with the gumboots. We are headed to the apiary. Come along and see what happens there. This is our apiary. Uh, it can hold up to 50 beehives. Um, the apiary is structured in a way that, number one, it must have ventilation. And you ensure that it has full ventilation. As you can see, on the upper part, we have not covered anything. We have just covered the roof. Then a wall should be around one meter or so, so that bees can freely uh, go into the beehives and for easy, easily can come out. Uh, number two, we have uh, put up our apiary. In a, you can see there are very many trees. Uh, most of these trees have flowers, for, so that um, they can easily access the, the bees can easily access the, the flowers to collect the nectar for the purposes of making. Um, the, the, the honey. Number two, in inside our inside our apiary, we have two types of um, beehives. Number one, we have the Kenya Toba hive, which is just right away here. The Kenya Toba hive um, is a very good hive. Normally. Um, it is easy to harvest. It has the queen excluder to separate the brood and the honey. So that when you are collecting the honey, you only collect pure honey. 
Then number two, we have um, another type of of um, another type of uh, beehive. We are calling Langstroth. Langstroth beehive. Langstroth beehive is also a very good hive. And this beehive, um, normally we have um, uh, the, the super. The top one is called the super. Then we have the brooder. This is where the queen is. The lower one is where the queen is. Then the upper one is where now the honey is. So the honey we have is to collect from the super. Then we have the top cover. Then the bottom uh, cover that holds the whole beehive. Now this type of beehive, Langstroth, is the easiest again to harvest because you only harvest honey from the super. Then the brooder is left, the honey in the brood is left for the queen and for the brood that is now has been given rise to for the development. And this beehive uh, is commonly used because it is very easy to manage. So we have, uh, for now we have uh, three uh, Langstroth beehives. Now normally the apiary should be maintained. Apiary is supposed to uh, even clear all the bushes around so that uh, there's no, um, there are no trees or any other vegetation that's growing to the inside. And that's why today we are going even to do the apiary cleaning so that the apiary is clean. Now, so far since this apiary was established, we have harvested over 30 liters of honey. This hive here, the first time we harvested, we got eight liters. This one, we got eight liters. Then we have the one that's at the top here. When we harvest, we got 10 liters. Then this one, we, did, we, have, we, have, we have not have harvested. It's now when I think right now, I'm going to check for honey. It must be having honey right now. But we shall be doing the checking for the presence of the, 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 the apiary. The apiary should have the roof. Now this roof, one, is there. Bees require a calm place is to ensure that bees are uh, the bees are at a calm place number two it also ensures that um, the hives remember they are wooden they are made of wood so we are keeping them we, we, are, we are putting up a roof so that this we, uh, this hives lifetime lifespan can be. Uh, thank you now how much does a litre of honey cost um on the market right now it is recommended that we sell honey in times of kgs. Uh, but locally, locally in our, uh, in our local market, we normally sell it in liters. A liter costs between 800 to 1,000. But it's just, it, it should just be 1,000. But when we are selling in kgs on, uh, um, on, on, on the outside market, one kg, it costs around 500 shillings. Uh, and what is the cost of uh, making uh, this you said there? This is the Langstroth beehive. Langstroth beehive. How much does it cost to make one? Yeah, um, when you are buying it from the market, normally it will cost between 4,000 5,000 when you are just buying a ready-made beehive. But if you want to, if you have the knowledge, for example, for my case, I have the knowledge on how to prepare it. I'll just buy the materials and then at the end of the day, you'll get that have, I have used around 2,000. Uh, 500. Good. Yeah. And uh, how long does it take for you to harvest honey? Like uh, once the bees have got into the beehive, they stay there how long before you can be able to harvest? Mm, it's not that much specific because uh, it depends with seasons. Mostly bees prepare honey during dry seasons. During a uh, uh, less cold season, maybe to, to be specific. Um, so, for example, if if I had um, erected a beehive and in January bees come in, it is colonized, then I can assure you that in three months' time, uh, honey will be ready because that was a, during a dry spell. Honey, no, uh, bees normally prepare honey so that they can eat they can provide food for themselves during cold season or scarcity, when there is scarcity of the nectar outside. So uh, depending on the seasons, during, mostly during, I've, I've, I've noted that during dry seasons, when there is no uh, more rain or uh, the coldness is reduced, is now when the honey is being prepared. For example, I've noted that I normally harvest 
honey in uh, March, April, and then uh, in October, around October, November, and then January. Again, I, I, I have it. So in a, in a year, it can be like three times or two times. So I, from, by that you can approximate. And uh, for the nectar, yes, the bees go looking for nectar around everywhere, or you have to plant things around where they can get the nectar. Number one, it is recommended. It, it is one of the, the factors to consider when you are citing an apiary. And as I began uh, uh, saying when you are doing the introduction, you must ensure that you have cited your apiary near a forest or where there are trees. Um, so the nectar should not be more than three kilometers away. Should be around three kilometers to the uh, to the beehive. So bees cannot go as far as three kilometers to look for for, for nectar. But then uh, it's also recommended that we also supplement the nectar uh, for the bees by providing what you call sugar syrup. We prepare what you call a, a sugar syrup where we mix water with the sugar and then you, you stir it up, then you provide it in the, next to the apiary. So uh, bees, as much as we should cite in a place where there's nectar flowers, but also it's recommended that we also supplement the nectar with what we call sugar syrup so that bees cannot strain to collect her, uh, nectar. And now how do you get to know that uh, this honey in the beehive? Number one, um, the beehives are supposed to be checked regularly. Um, like a every month, I can say that, they are supposed to be checked. But uh, whenever you, you go to a, a beehive and then you try lifting it, when there's honey, it's very heavy. That's one of the signs. Even if you, want, you don't want to open the top cover, once you just lift the beehive, you feel the weight. And as a farmer, you will, you will be able to gauge and uh, tell if they, 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 there's honey inside. Number two, we do the checking, as I have said. So you will come with the smoker, you smoke around the beehive, uh, and then you remove the top cover. Then once you remove one of the combs, and the comb is appearing a uh, yellowish or dark yellow, then it means, and I, as I have said, you only harvest honey from the super, the top, the top part or only the super part. Also, the, mm. the entire hive mm. has uh, honey, but you only harvest from one section. Yeah, normally this is called the brooder. This is the brooder where the queen is. So eggs are laid here. And the brood are here. So that honey is only meant for the queen and the brood. Whenever you interfere with the honey inside here, number one, uh, bees normally have what you call bee swarming. Whenever you, you interfere with the queen's honey, but, uh, uh, what will happen is the queen can, can evade, can escape that beehive, and then it comes out. So once, once it, it evades the beehive, all bees now will swarm outside the beehive. They boycott the beehive. So that's why we recommend that we, we recommend that we leave the honey in the brooder for only the queen and the brood. Then we harvest honey from the super only. Oh, now that's good knowledge. So mm. once you leave honey from the bottom part, you said there? The brooder. The brooder. Yes. So once you leave honey in the brooder, it means uh, you harvest, then again they continue making more honey. Yeah. They will continue now. You know, you, you don't harvest from the brooder, you harvest from the super. From the super. Yeah. So once you harvest from the super and you return that super, this one is removable. You can see it's are joined here. Yes. They are joined here. So once you, you remove the super and you, you take the combs outside, once you return it, the bees again will begin to make other combs. They'll begin to make other combs. Oh, good. Yeah. And once you have not interfered with the brooder, it means now the queen is still active. It still is feeding. And the, the, and, uh, the, 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 brood, the brooder again are growing up. Maybe just to mention something uh, of information is that um, uh, bees, they undergo what you call complete metamorphosis. The queen will come and lay eggs. The eggs will molt into, um, um, into lava, and then they'll molt into pupa, then adult bees. So those stages, they take around 10 days to molt. 
So it, within 10 days, it means now uh, the, 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 the brood will be, must be adults. So if they're not feeding well, then it means they're going to be slow in their growth. And that's why we recommend that the brooder must be left. The honey in the brooder should not be harvested. But I know there are people who are malicious at some point, they will want to harvest that honey. And you get to understand that, one, the strength of the beehive will be reduced. Because um, um, uh, the, the, the strength of the beehive helps in making the honey. If the, uh, the, the beehive is weak, meaning it has less bees, and, uh, and the, 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 the queen is not very active, then also the ability of making honey will be reduced. So the more the strength of the bee hive, the more the ability to make honey. It means the bees will be very active. So that's why we, re we recommend that the brooder should not be touched by the farmer, should be left for, uh, to, for the feeding of the bees. Remember, this honey is not meant for human consumption, according to the bees. The analogy for the bees is that we are making and putting up food for our consumption. So man comes in just as, a, as, a, as an enemy or, or as a predator to the, to the bees, honey. So, uh, we, we, so for you to be also human, you also leave some, some honey for the bees. For the bees, you, you don't finish their food. You don't finish, for their, you, 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 you don't finish their food. Great. So when do you think we'll be coming to harvest so that we can show our viewers when we harvest and when we prepare and when we pack yeah um, today enjoy the harvest today in the in the night around uh, uh, around 7 I'll be coming to harvest you know to check for the honey first so that um, I'm sure that the honey is there and then uh, probably tomorrow we shall now come and harvest when the honey will be there so tomorrow uh, I invite you that you come and we check together. No, we, we, no. in the evening we come and check together and then tomorrow we now come and harvest the honey together. Great. And uh, normally it's recommended that um, harvesting should take place not late in the night, but early in the evening. So at around seven, it's okay. Why are we saying that? We normally recommend that we harvest this honey at around seven because um, yeah, yeah, there there is some some light so that we cannot injure most of the bees in fact it's recommended that when you are harvesting honey never injure any bee you are supposed to do it um, not to injure any bee so that the number is re retained for their own use so we harvest it early, early in the evening so that light is still there so that you can be very, very careful or not to injure the bees and even the brood. And then we also ensure that we are harvesting the honey, not the, the, the brooder, not, not, not the brood, the young ones of the bees. We are harvesting pure honey. So it's recommended that we do it early in the evening for the purposes of that. And then uh, maybe if also an information um, about um, uh, uh, beekeeping that we also should come to our knowledge is that um, bees in the evening are very, they are inactive, they become inactive in, a, in cold weather. They become inactive. And that's why we recommend that you should do it late in the evening when they are inactive. Because in a dry, you know, in a, in a, in a sunshine day, they become very active. And it means they'll be very harmful when, whenever you interfere with them. When they notice there is an enemy, they'll become at that time. Thank you for the info. Yes. We are looking forward to come and check the, the honey. Yes. And of course, see the harvesting process. Thank you so much. I'm humbled to, uh, to have you around.